Hey guys, you're watching another StarCraft 2 computation. It is still Killbot Wars and Miss Opportunities. We have Killbots, they have a predetermined kill count before they expire. And Moment of Silence, whenever we kill a hero yet or a, a Killbot, uh, all the others around it get uh, disabled from attacking. They can still move, but they cannot attack. So I'm playing this time as Artanis and my ally Yuri Prime is playing as Kerrigan. So we had a look at my uh, mastery points there. I have Shield Overcharge. Cooldown, uh, speed increases, and chrono boost duration. So, uh, the actual game itself was a little hectic, and it was quite difficult to commentate, but now that I have time, I'm gonna go to the replay and uh, try to be more informative with my commentary. So, the strategy going to this was. Are you, are you real? Sorry, I've uh, been here a while, and the Terrazine, not the best for my sanity. <laughs> it's not. In case you are real, Someone out there has been messing with my harvesting bots. Would you mind keeping an eye on them for me? So the strategy going to this game was I was going to mass tempests and try to uh, kill the attack waves that arrive and my ally will be going for a bunch of zerglings to uh, stall basically the kill bots. Now the difficult thing and the reason why a lot of people are not going for Artanis is because Artanis has guardian shell. Normally it's a great thing in mutators to have uh, a second life on your units, but in this case, the guardian shell delays the kill uh, on the kill bots, and so they stay on the map a little longer, and uh, it takes you a bit longer to uh, basically move your units around to the other kill bots. So I rushed out a gateway, and I had my uh, power field there, so I can warp in the zealot right away, start attacking the rocks. My ally, meanwhile, went for a uh, hatchery first, right beside his rocks, so he doesn't need to actually break the rocks, he just needs to build his hatchery beside. And now he's going for a pair of uh, extractors, so he can harvest some gas for Kerrigan upgrades. So I built, uh, sorry, I warped in two zealots to break down the rocks. So originally, I was expecting that he would make some sort of army later on, but it turns out that he just made nothing but zergling, so that is an interesting strategy. Which you will see later on. He's just starting a spawning pool. And I'm already uh, working on my cybernetics core. So I try to rush out my uh, Stargate cube, but I forget whether I did get it immediately or not. Yeah, it looks like I don't have enough minerals yet, and I'd rather focus on. Enemy forces. Templar, prepare to intercept. I'd rather focus on the Nexus first. And as I get enough minerals, I plop it down right away. My ally, on the other hand, already has a hatchery, and I did chrono boost that, so I can get uh, additional uh, speed to build up. Uh, is it building faster? Looks like a geyser is about to become active. One of my bots will depart for it shortly. I think it is. I think it's building faster. Let's actually watch his. Uh... Ooh, he has the Alarak voice pack. That's nice. <laughs> Okay, so what happened here was, uh... What happened here was that the uh, derps were moving, and it was quite difficult to aim the Orbital Strike, as uh, any of you Artanis players may know, moving targets and Orbital Strike are not a fun pair. So as you can see, uh, my ally is already going to work, sacrificing those Zerglings to that killbot. And Don't let it get destroyed. as soon as uh, these enough zerglings are killed, it expires and uh, releases a large, a fairly large field, uh, and that uh, puts moment of silence. It puts moment of silence all over uh, the enemy units that happen to be in that area. So warp and zealots to try and. Fight this uh this a derp wave, and that one a derp tried to kite me, but no chance. <laughs> Alarak voice pack. So yeah, nice thing uh, is that uh in the replay, you can actually you can actually hear uh your ally's voice pack, and even when even when your ally. 
even when your ally leaves the game, you can uh, you can hear your ally's voice pack on his units. So that is interesting. So he's using Kerrigan to clear out the second wave, and now um, is he going to go for? I actually forgot. Is he going to go for the that bonus? So he's uh, killing the defenses before the. Before the bonus, and he actually sees that the killbot has headed to his base. I warp in the singles out there uh, to gather up the minerals, and I'm sort of just watching his uh, his zerglings there get fed to the killbot. Uh, so I have a bunch of probes there as well, uh, just to draw some of that uh, fire from the killbots, and I've started production with the tempests. And well, let's actually see. Wow. Out of yeah, we have somewhat even APMs, but he's clearly doing more. Right now, at least. Cleared out most of the attack waves. Yeah, he was a bit eager uh, moving Kagan back when he hasn't cleared the bonus yet. Assimilation aura is ready, my queen. Okay, so. Uh, this is where it starts to uh, a bit go a bit uh, not as planned. As you can see, the killbot only needs five kills, but uh, oh wow, all those zerglings! But yeah, as soon as those zerglings uh, get guardian shell, the killbot actually starts hitting a different target. And now, right now, it's going fine, but later on, later on, you will see that uh, the killbot changes target so much that. Yeah, the kill boss changed target so much that they take so long to kill the uh, any zerglings, and they actually. They actually stay alive longer than they should, which is a bit annoying, actually. So, what is my ally looking at now? Oh, he's just managing his base. He's actually getting ground attack upgrades, melee upgrades. And he uses uh, Kerrigan to <laughs> jump into that. <laughs> okay, I see his plan. He's trying to use Kerrigan to use immobilization wave. So Kerrigan got caught up uh, in a. Kerrigan got caught in this, they swore... Did you happen to save any of the extracted terrazine? <laughs> no? Okay, well, that's, a, that's okay. Kerrigan got caught in a stasis ward, so... money on more geyser showing up soon. If, <laughs> you know, I had any money. Kerrigan got caught in a stasis ward, so she was, he wasn't able to actually intercept the enemy wave here at this point. So what I did was to warp in zealots to uh, stall, basically stall the wave from getting... Uh, getting past and allow Kerrigan to get out of the stasis ward and use immobilization wave. So yeah, now you can see that the bot is clearly changing to R2 much and it still has, oh, it's still at three kills. It should have been actually wiped out by now, but due to Guardian Shell, it's actually, yeah, shooting a lot of things but not really killing anything. And that is a big waste of time. It's only at six, but you can see about uh, a dozen or so zerglings that are in the red all around it. Well, now it's dead, but there's another there's another kill bot headed for my base. And you can see clearly see that uh, Guardian Shell is doing more harm than good. And now it's headed into my base. And I use a bunch of probes to draw it away. It's actually not enough, but at least it's not. It's not over killing. Uh, it's not over uh, killing a lot of other things. 
Aside from uh, the ones that I already have there. And let's ba go back to my controls. Yeah, I'm just uh, using Tempest to. Oh wow! Right when I right when I switched. Very nice, Kerrigan. Very nice. Yeah, let's just pretend we saw that. That was so awesome, guys. You, you should applaud Kerrigan's immobilization. That was so awesome. And now, uh, my Tempests are intercepting these Phoenixes. And again, you see the Warbots switching tar targets back and forth. So, yeah, even I, even I was was a bit uh, distracted. But as you can see, at least my probes uh, they never left. They never. Uh, Never, they never stray too far, so they get killed anyway as soon as the, the Guardian Shell wears off. And now I'm uh, using my Tempest to set these Phoenixes here. And that moment of silence apparently works even on Kerrigan. It just looks like she has a little uh, twister or a little storm on top of her. What is Kerrigan? Wow, she's really just, he's really just massing Zerglings. Let's see what he's uh, what his spending is. I still have more spin on army. That is amazing. <laughs> that is incredible. Apparently, uh, he has a bunch of uh, uncollected resource pickups. Ooh. Apparently, the uh, this power field exists for both players. That is interesting. Upgrades wise, yeah, I only have Disintegration Wave and Proros Air Weapons. And the ally has Infantry, Chain Reaction, Ability and Efficiency, Heroic Fortitude, all that fancy stuff. Ooh, he has a no, Megaworm too. We are both looking at this uh, approximate location. And I see my ally uh, sacrificing some Zerglings there. I move some. Uh, I move some probes up that location as well. Yes, Statman. You should know. You're a scientist, person thingy. You shouldn't have any problem determining whether it's half empty or half full. It's actually a. Oh wow, my entire fleet got a uh, moment of silence. Let's actually count how long the duration is. I think when I, when I watched the replay uh, for my first attempt, it actually seemed that it, uh, it held for about 10 blizzard seconds, but Rain Camp says that it, uh, it's actually 15 blizzard seconds, so we will know, we will find out. When I counted, it did seem like 10 blizzard seconds, so I may be wrong though. Could be wrong. So, uh, you're prime as immobilization wave, but I'd rather have my own solar bombardment here. And I'll drop it right there. Whereas Kerrigan, uh, where is Kerrigan? There he is. She still has immobilization wave, so she can use that. Whenever she's in a tight spot. Oh, that one hybrid. Okay, now Kerrigan's jumping in. And uses that fancy combo. Assimilation Aura and Immobilization Wave is always a nice combo to use. And I run in a pair of Zealots to collect all that money. And now I'm back to being a wretch Protoss who masses Tempests. And there's another kill bot here. As you can see, it gets physically bigger uh, when, whenever it has more kill or more units to kill. Now let's use our orbital strike, to take out that immortal, so our result can truly hit the uh, bonus objective, the Belshir Glider. And we're just sort of moving our Tempest in the middle so they can intercept the attack waves. And right here, I am, a bit, I am a bit of a dilemma. I use my Tempest to intercept the one from the north. And 
While that's happening, I run them back over to intercept the one from the south. And of course, another three uh, killbots spawn as my uh, Tempests are scrambling back. Nice uh, simulation R by Kerrigan that I'll allow my Tempest to do or to give additional value when they kill the enemy units. Okay, so I use Orbital Strike there, a rare time where it's actually useful, just because the Phoenixes uh, in that particular area stacked right on top of each other. So that was uh, an opportunity too good to pass up. Right now I'm at 146 supplies, so I'm gonna... Well, never mind. Uh, Kerrigan used Immobilization Wave to clear out the entire attack wave. And that is awesome. That time, that time I actually caught the... Uh, That time I actually caught the immobilization wave. So let's kill the last two void rays and actually fly in to the enemy base. Let's start clearing that out. You will see how that turns out. But uh, my ally has a bunch of uh, zerglings just waiting at the killbot. And actually, it's actually not going well. <laughs> I momentarily dropped down to 108 supply, but I'm now back to 131. So you can see there are five killbots around the map, and I actually see Kerrigan has the right idea here. He's clearing out this area, since if you don't know yet, the killbots spawn from any building uh, that the enemy owns. So the more uh, areas you clear, the fewer places that the bots could possibly spawn, and the better we can camp the uh, bot spawn locations. So yeah, now he's clearing these bases, so this whole area will be eliminated. And once that's done, there will only be one area where all of the bots will come from. And my Tempest have arrived, and they helped clear out that one, <laughs> that one building. But I'm back up to 152 supply, so I can actually start pushing again. The ally loads all the zerglings, and as you can see, the bot once again. Once again, keep using up uh, or keep switching targets. The killbot once again keeps switching targets without actually killing a whole lot. So I use solar bombardment to. I think that clear out most of the enemies there, but not the buildings. The buildings are the important things. We need to kill those, otherwise, that happens. The killbots keep spawning, and now this one has 15, 15 units, and it's predetermined kill count. So uh, we'll actually have to scramble use there, just for the uh, kill bots to redirect their fire towards the smaller units. Actually, let's check out their stats. This one has 50. Oh, that explains it. Yeah, as they get bigger, they have... As they get bigger, they have a greater attack attack capabilities, 50 damage, and 5 range. Okay, now I think we've cleared out all the buildings, so these should be the very last boss to spawn. No more after these. So actually, we technically cleared it a bit faster than we did last time. So yeah, my allies just focused on uh, using a bunch of zerglings to clear out the kill bots. Whereas I'm focusing on uh, defending the boss from the shuttle waves or from the uh, defending the boss with attack waves. Still trying to mass tempest with whatever resource I can gather. And apparently, the zerglings are not only great distractions for the killbots; they're only they're also great distractions for the enemy waves. Another nice immobilization rate from Kerrigan clears out all the enemies and gives my Tempest the bandwidth to help out uh, with the attack wave in the north. And you see a bunch of these void rays clump up, so I use uh, I use orbital strike to splash them down. We have another attack wave in, uh, from the east. 
Okay, we actually need to clear out uh, these void rays. Uh oh, that harvest is was getting very low. We need to kill those void rays. There we go. Yeah, that one bot is very close to falling. So we need to uh, use our Tempest to shield it. Lost Tempest there, never a good sound, but... Eh, I've got a bunch of resources in return, so... Fair trade, fair trade. GG is called. I think uh, we actually survived, there are only uh, three bots left, we can afford to lose one of them. Enemy forces incoming, slay them to the last. Okay, so... Let's finish off these Void Rays first before running back. Our allied base is under attack. Running back to finish off the last enemy wave. Oh, second to last. Never mind, there was there's another one back to the uh, northeast. But we need to intercept these first since these are closer to the harvesting bots. My bots are under attack! My bots are under attack! And we have solar bombardment. So we use that co combo with Immobilization Wave to finish off those Tempests. And now we move back to intercept the one from the northeast and that should be game over. That is the last wave, I think. And as you can see, considering that no more enemy spawns or no more enemy killbots are spawning, we have actually managed to uh, finish off uh, all the buildings on this map. <laughs> it's easy, one try. <laughs> Yeah, totally, guys. Totally one try. Uh, no, we did. Uh, we need a few more tries to uh, clear this map with this particular combo because uh, I actually wanted an Artanis, uh, an Artanis completion, no matter what. Because I realized that Artanis is gonna be one of the more difficult commanders. Yes! I can finally finish this research and get off this godforsaken rock. I'm sorry. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. If you have an idea for what else I can do, please leave that in a comment. And as you can see the score screen, I kill a bit more, around 50. But uh, considering that Kerrigan only used her own hero unit and a bunch of Zorgans in this track, that's not bad for Kerrigan actually, that's actually pretty good for Kerrigan. And Tempest are still slow and they still need a lot of uh, a lot of time to kill things and they over overkill those things that they do kill. But apart from that, yeah, Tempests are your best bet and use probes to draw away some of the killbots. Alright, see you!